In today's video, we're going to use ChatGPT to create a bot to play the Flappy Bird game we made in a previous video. I could sit here and play the Flappy Bird game myself, but what if instead we could write an AI bot to play the game for us? That'd be pretty cool, but that's not what we're going to do. Instead, we're going to work with ChatGPT to make the bot to play the game. Going to be great. Let's do it. Later in this video, my friend's dog Raider and I are going to teach some basic AI concepts. It all starts with the initial prompt to have ChatGPT outline the process to create a bot to play the game. ChatGPT spits out the instructions broken down into eight steps. Let's take a close look at step one. ChatGPT recommends we use reinforcement learning, which I agree is a great choice. But what is reinforcement learning? We're gonna give you a quick demo. Okay, Rainer, roll over. Good boy. Every time I give the command roll over and he does it, he gets a positive reward. And that's an example of reinforcement learning. We're gonna be using reinforcement learning to train the bot as well. We'll see Rainer again, but first, step two is to make a Flappy Bird game, which we did in the last video. So now we go on to step three, to define the inputs and outputs. The inputs to a bot are how the bot sees the world. The inputs to the bot are the bird's vertical position, the distance to the next pipe, and the height of the gap in the pipe. To create the bot, we first bring ChatGPT up to speed by copy-pasting in the code for our existing Flappy Bird game. We then ask ChatGPT to write the bot for us, and it provides instructions to install a supporting software package from the internet, as well as providing the code to our AI bot, which we copy-paste over. There were about a half dozen code bugs that ChatGPT and I worked through. We're gonna skip through all that nitty gritty of fixing those bugs because I wanna get straight to the really fun stuff of taking the AI bot ChatGPT and I developed together and training it through thousands of simulations, allowing the AI bot to get better and smarter over time. Remember when we set up the inputs to the bird? I realized I want to provide one extra piece of information. When I play Flappy Bird, I also consider my current vertical velocity, how fast I'm going up and down. Whether the bird is currently moving up or down could help the AI make better decisions. ChatGPT agrees. You're right, it says, adding the vertical velocity could help the AI agent perform better, and it provided the code for me to copy-paste over to add this extra input to the bot. You see these red lines? They visualize the sensors that we are giving to the AI. In addition to the bird's current height, it also knows its vertical velocity and it knows the distance and angle to the next pipe gap. On to steps four and five, we're gonna start training using reinforcement learning. Let's chat some more about how Rainer was trained so we can apply these principles to an AI bot. All right, Rainer, roll, roll. Good boy. Every time Rainer rolls, he gets a treat. That's a positive reward. Did you notice at the beginning when Rainer didn't quite make it over, he didn't get the reward yet? When his owners were teaching Rainer how to do the trick, Rainer would only get the reward when he successfully did the rollover. At some points, Rainer might have even rolled over by accident, or maybe he was shown by hand, and then he got the positive reward. The important thing is that he only gets the positive reward when the trick is done. Similarly, ChatGPT wrote code to give the AI bot a reward for every frame that it's alive. It's a simple reward function. Stay alive, get reward. Collide with a pipe, and the simulation is over. But what does this reward even mean? The AI bot has a virtual brain called a neural network that receives the input height, vertical velocity, distance, and angle to the next gap. Using this information, the neural network brain decides when to flap. We can wire the internals of different bird brains in different ways, so they each choose to flap at different times. In a sense, you can think of each virtual bird having its own personality. All right, so what happens when we train our first generation of birds? <laughs> Not what I expected. As soon as I ran my first bird, it went flying off the top of the screen. So what's going on? Okay, so as it turns out, the AI bot immediately figured out an exploit. There's no maximum height, and the geometry of the pipes stops just off the top of the screen. So the bird was able to easily fly above all the pipes and scoop up lots of rewards. So first order of business, we put a maximum flying height in the game, and now we can see how well the AI bot performs over time. Here's how it looks after 50,000 training steps. The bird knows how to fly, but it doesn't know how to get through the pipes. 150,000 training steps we have the birds trying to get through the first gap, but not quite making it. But watch what happens after 300,000 training steps. 
the AI bot birds of this generation are actually starting to learn how to get through the pipe gaps. This one scored five points. Let's fast forward many generations to half a million training steps. Check this out. Not only does it go past five points, it goes all the way to 100. So I think we can safely say this AI creation has mastered our Flappy Bird game. Could an AI bot handle an even harder version of Flappy Bird? All right, let's have a little extra fun. Let's find out how well it's gonna do if we reduce the distance between the pipes. Not very well, but that's not totally fair. It's a new set of circumstances and this particular bird brain hasn't been bred to deal with this environment where the pipes are so close to each other. So let's train up a new bot. For this bot, in addition to using the bird's current height, velocity, and distance and angle to the next pipe, let's also add the distance and angle to the pipe after that. To visualize this, you can see the red arrow shows the distance and angle to the next pipe, and the orange arrow is the distance and angle to the pipe after that. And to make sure we turbocharge the bot, we're doing 5 million training steps. And check it out! We've made an AI bot that can play a juiced up hard mode of the Flappy Bird game with superhuman performance. If players are using bots to exploit games, that's not good. But bots can also serve positive uses, such as being your targets in a PvE game, fun to practice against for a PvP game, provide a friendlier tutorial, or fill in for a teammate when they disconnect. Rainer, do you think people will subscribe if you say please? Please? Rainer, uh, up up. He's, he's, he pooped out.